Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, brethren, and welcome to Daily Fountain Devotion of Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. As you participate in this very devotion, I pray that the Almighty God will bless you abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, give us the grace to listen to your word and incline our hearts to respond to the dictates of your word for our own good and blessings and for your own praise and glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. The topic for our discussion is the Lord's speeding word. And the text is taken from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to 5. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free cause and be glorified even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord, touching you, that you both do and will do the things which will command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the year 1967, during the Israeli and Arab wars, the captain of the Israeli army made a clarion call, and I quote, Brethren, let us go to the Almighty God in prayer. Perhaps he will answer us and give us victory as he did to our forefathers. Thessalonica was the capital city of Roman province of Macedonia. It is a region which presently belongs to the Greece. Paul established this very church during his second missionary journey in the year AD 120, and the epistle was distributed from Corinth. Despite Paul's first letter to the church, in which he encouraged them to believe in God and be steadfast in Him, in their faith. In the midst of persecutions, troubles that surrounded them, they were bent in discussing issues concerning the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It seemed that some of them believed that the day of the Lord had already come. At this point, Paul wrote this very letter to correct certain erroneous impressions they had about the Perusia, which is the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul told them that before Christ's return, evil and wickedness will reach a climax under the leadership of a mysterious figure he called lawlessness who will be opposed to Christ. The central idea surrounding this letter Paul wrote to the Corinthians was the reality of the second coming of Christ. Paul made it known to them and to the present day Christians and believers that though evil abounds and rages at his region in our time. But evil and evil doers must face a far dis more decisive and devastating end at the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. From the text, Paul presented prayer as the Lord's speedy word. He presented prayer as the panacea as the instrument of warfare in the hands of Christians and also in the hands of the church. 
the instrument the Christians will use to fight for all her problems, to provide solution to all her problems, persecutions, trials, temptations, and other things that amount to distraction to the spread of the word of God. In this vein, Paul enjoined the church and the Christians to hold now the ropes of prayer, to anchor on prayer. Firstly, he asked the Christians to pray for the missionaries, particularly for him, that he might do exploit in his missionary enterprise. At a point he said that he should be prayed for, that God will open his mouth and give him all trust to speak effectively so that the word of God will move out and touch the hearers and they will receive it and be saved. We live in a world where the church and Christianity is facing a lot of challenges like the people in the days of the Thessalonian church. This time we face trials from Islamization. We suffer threats of Islamization, terrorist attacks, kidnapping, and maiming of church leaders. All these are meant to dissuade the spread of the good news. But our hope is not lost. Our confidence remains that the Lord Jesus Christ has made a promise unto us. In Matthew 16, verse 18, he said unto Peter, and I quote, Thou art Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell shall never prevail against it. Nonetheless, brethren, we need to pray for divine intervention. We need to pray for divine protection and security, for strength and courage, for wisdom to continue preaching the gospel, ministering unto the dying souls, trying to win souls to depopulate the kingdom of darkness. We need prayers. We need fervent prayers. The churches and Christians should cultivate the habit of prayer because it is the only panacea. It is the only remedy. Even if we have faith in the Lord, the only way we can communicate our faith is through prayers. So faith, righteousness, without prayers, they may be effective, but they may not be all that effective. So prayer is the will on which everything about Christians anchor. So the St. Paul wanted the church to pray for the success of the missionary work because he was aware that there will be significant opposition wherever the word of God will be preached. Little wonder, the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, that we should pray always. In your problems, as Christians, as a church, in the face of persecutions and challenges in mission, how do you respond? How do you handle your problems? Do you keep on complaining or murmuring, blaming and accusing God for calling you and abandoning you? Or do you approach your problems through prayers? People that have been there in the mission field before us, they prayed and God answered their prayers and their missionary work was successful. People like Paul and Silas, when they ministered, they preached, they healed the demon possessed and because of that, they were arrested and thrown into the prison. Dear, they, under normal circumstance, they're supposed to 
complain. They're supposed to murmur. They're supposed to blame maybe God for that situation. It was a good work they did, but see them suffering. But they did not complain. Rather, they resorted to prayer. In the midst of their precarious situation, they were praying. They were praising God. And their prayers moved the hand of God. And the heavens were made open unto you. Child of God, may I decree as a servant of God this morning. At any time, you lift your right hand in righteousness to pray upon your situations and problems. The heavens will be opened unto you, and God will answer you and grant you your heart desire. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. So Paul and Silas, they prayed. The heavens were opened unto them. The glory of God shined upon them in that very prison. The doors were blown open by the power of the prayers. The windows were blown open. Even their chains were broken. Even what supposed to be a painful situation resulted to a redemptive act of God to save the dying. Even by reason of their prayer, the jailer gave his life to Christ and he was baptized together with his family. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. It didn't end there. When Paul Herod the king killed James and nobody talked, nobody said anything. He proceeded and arrested John, killed John. Nobody said anything. He went forth and arrested Peter, believing after the feast of Passover, he will bring him and do the same thing as he did to John and James. But when Peter was there in the prison, the Peter was not even praying. He was sleeping, but the church reclined and they were praying. And the church was praying because the Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. When the church was praying that Lord God of all send his angel and the angel of God went into that prison. And the moment the angel went there, the light of God shined in that prison. Child of God, prayer attracts light. I don't know the darkness you are passing through. Darkness of sickness, darkness of suffering, poverty, hardship, setbacks, darkness of wastage. This hour, I pray as a servant of God. As we pray, let the light of God shine in that situation and let that darkness be dispelled in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because there is power in prayers. So, as the church prayed, Peter was there sleeping. The angel struck him by the side and said, Get up, put on your sandals, put on your ghetto, come and move. And as they moved, the gates were being opened on their own accord. Even the giant iron gate was lifted. Brethren, there is power in prayer. Effectual fervent prayer of the saints have led much. Pray, pray, that there, because there is reward in praying. Jesus says, if you are in me, and if my word is in you, ask whatsoever, and that is John 15 verse 7, ask whatsoever that is your heart desire. It shall be given unto you. What you need to do is to ensure that you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ensure that the word of God dwells in you. And when you are clothed with that very power, open your mouth and talk to God. The heavens will hearken to your prayers, and the joy of the Lord will be your own strength. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. So, prayer will help us understand that God is a faithful God, that God cares and loves us. But when you don't pray, there's no way you will see the manifestation of the power of God. The Israeli army, as I said in our introduction, in 1967, when the Arab, some of the Arab nations gathered league to fight to annihilate the people of Israel from the face of the earth. So the Israel government went to the United Nations and asked for their assistance, if not for any other thing, to intervene and ensure there is peace. But 
the United Nations disappointed them. They waited for their response for a long time. That was to no avail. They went to the United States of America. That is one of the world powers. They asked them for intervention, for assistance, but they were disappointed. But the, the, the then general, army general of the Israeli army went to his people and called on them and said, Oh, brethren, now that we have been disappointed by the United Nations and America has disappointed us, let us now go to God in prayers. Perhaps God will answer us. God will give us victory as he did to our forefathers. So they hearkened to his request and they went to the Welling Wall, a part of the Jerusalem temple. They gathered there. History said that they prayed for three days, fasting, and after which God said unto them, Move, for I have given the Arab nations into your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. And they went forth, even when the Arab nations, Egypt, Iraq, Syria, Jordan, Iran, and some others were sleeping. On the fifth day of July 1967, the Israeli army, by the guidance and inspiration of the Holy Spirit, went and surrounded all the Arab nations. They were able to destroy their army located in Syria. And by the reason of this very exploit, Strengthened by prayers, they were able to recover most of their lost property and land, which included the Golan Heights, the Sinai Peninsula, and others they recovered. People of God, through prayer, you can recover whatsoever you have lost. Pray, and God will happen to you. Pray. Our God is not deaf to hear our prayers. The hand of God is not shortened to reach forth to bless us. More often than not, our distance from God precludes the hand of God reaching us and blessing us. So Israeli army recovered all the lost in the hands of their enemies. Our nation Nigeria is not left out brethren. With prayers, we can bring health and hope to our nation, Nigeria. Let me tell us the truth. Whether the leaders want to accept it or not, the nation, Nigeria, is looking on the Christians to do something to salvage the nation, Nigeria. We cannot do that with weapon. We cannot do that with 8K47. We have our weapon of warfare. Wow. Paul made mention of the weapon of warfare in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18 and 19. And prayer is one of the weapons of warfare we can use to recover the economy of the nation, to recover the political instability in the nation. The prayer is a weapon of warfare to fight against terrorism, to fight against kidnapping, to recover Nigeria totally unto God. Through prayer, God will come and reign in his nation and every other contending power will bow before him. God's word can be speeded up to actualize the purpose with which God has sent it through prayers. Let no wonder, Paul insisted, that we should pray for him, that God will give him the grace as he opened his mouth to minister effectively, to win souls. Therefore, people of God, pray without season. The church of God, arise, go to your knees and pray. God will hearken. God will, through his church, recover his people save the nation nigeria from collapsing let us pray O lord our father direct our hearts to the love of your gospel and enable us to pray 
in spirit and also to recover whatsoever we had lost and also oh God, to do exploit in the mission field so at the end jehovah your world will move even to the unreached and they will be reached souls will be won into your kingdom while the kingdom of the devil will be depopulated thank you abba father for in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen thank you people of god for listening may god continue to bless you waiting to see you again tomorrow morning god bless you we thank you for fellowshipping with us today we invite you to join us tomorrow morning same time same station for another special edition of the daily fountain If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.